Along with the latest update to the game, 1.36, the new Gran Turismo 7 daily races are also available this week, running for the next seven days and using a selection of the game's circuits that all appear on the current Formula 1 calendar. Race A starts us off and it is once again a no DRSR update event. This format has been standard almost every week since May 2022 and it means that neither your driver rating or sportsmanship rating will be affected by anything that happens in the race. It's the usual one make event this week but it features a particularly special vehicle that forms part of Formula 1's history, the Honda RA272 from 1965. Courtesy of American driver Richie Ginther, this was the first Japanese car to win an F1 race, achieving the feat at the final round of the season in Mexico. You'll be taking the Honda home though this week with a four lap race around Suzuka. It's available to borrow in a standard livery for the race if you don't have an example of your own, or you don't want to put any miles on it, but the car also appears in the Legends Cars dealer right now for two and a half million credits. The only regulations of which you'll need to be aware of is that the racing hard tyre compound is required and the fact it's a grid start with a false start check is certainly one that's going to catch people out. You'll need to hold the car on the brakes or handbrake from the moment the final light comes on until they go off or you'll get an instant loss of power and probably get collected by the cars behind. Races B and C remain the usual events for Group 4 and Group 3 machinery, roughly equivalent to GT4 and GT3 cars, but again both races allow for the ability to adjust brake balance. That, along with a change to the balance of performance that was brought in with the latest update, may see some different cars rise to the top. I can definitely vouch for that, as when I raced at Spa, it was mainly all McLarens. It's the Group 4 cars up in Race B this week, which is another 4 lap race, but around the fearsome Circuit de Spa Francochamps. Aside from the need to fit racing hard tyres to your choice of Group 4 car, there's no other concerns here for what's going to be a straight blast from start to finish. However, Race C brings back mandatory tyres this week. You'll have both racing medium and racing soft tyres available for use, but you will be required to use the medium options for at least one lap, defined as crossing the start-finish line on the track and not in the pits. There's also a relatively high tyre wear factor here, with it set at six times for this week, that means your tyres will wear at six times the normal rate, which turns this 12-lap race around Interlagos into a 72-lapper from the point of view of your tyres. Given the massive time loss from pitting Interlagos though, a no-stop strategy on racing mediums is probably a winner, and the ability to change brake balance will allow you, by shifting it to the rear, to stretch the tyre life to achieve that. In order to access the daily races, you'll need to unlock Sport Mode by completing Menu Book 9, the Tokyo Highway Parade, in the GT Cafe single-player hub. And as ever, with Gran Turismo 7's daily races updating every Monday across the game's life to date, the next set should arrive on Monday, August the 14th, and we will see you then.